Get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, They Can Save, written by Paul Reimer. Well, sir, the evening meal has been over only a little while as we enter the small house halfway up on the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook. Vic is established in his easy chair with a newspaper, while Sade, who has just returned from a brief call on her friend Dottie Brainfeeble next door, hovers near the Davenport and says eagerly, You're not doing anything but reading that old newspaper, are you? I wouldn't call it an old newspaper. Fresh off the press, costing three cents or less. The beguile of the time rings an answering chime. Makes me happy and gay through the entire day. Here's an item you like, advertising the bike. And a piece about cheese that is quite sure to please. <laughs> I see you're in good humor anyway. Well, that's fine. You won't give me any argument. What do you want me to do? Throw your newspaper off to one side and come with me. Where? Chuck and Dottie's. Oh. Come on. What's the idea? You see. I'm a fun-loving boy, Dr. Sleech, and I love gay pranks and all this and that, but let's not allow the impish spirit of whimsy to turn our... No, on your feet, on your feet. What's going on over at Chuck and Dottie? You'll see, you'll see. Oh, my. That's the fella. I only just got settled with my newspaper. I only just composed myself to an hour or so that's of quiet. Right, that's grand. You got your shoes on? I hadn't taken them off. Here we go, then. We're forever saying we're not going to... We're going to cut down on this constant running back and forth of brain fever. Holy smokes, either we're in their laps or they're in our laps every half minute. Well, we only minute. stay five minutes. Well, what's the excitement? Dottie's got another new dress. Huh? Come on, come on, we're on our way. Dottie's got another new dress. Open the screen door. We won't have to bother locking up the house. We can glance over every once in a while to check up on robbers. Anyway, it'll be lovely daylight for an hour yet. Open the screen door. You're dragging me over to brain fields to see a lame brain dress? That's it. Come on, Mr. Thundercloud. What do I, I permit myself to be led around by the nose on silly dodges and pretexts? <laughs> la, 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 la. We have fun, don't we, wife? Let's not walk clear around by the sidewalk. Let's cut across the lawn just this once. Hardly any grass yet anyway to speak of. Anything to get there in a hurry. I haven't seen good old Chuck and Duddy for maybe an hour and a half. Oh, you got all evening to hide your head behind your newspaper. Let's walk faster. I'm getting frantic to see darling Chuck and Daddy. I'll tell you something to make you feel good, Vic. I'm good looking. Daddy bought her new dress mainly on account of you. What are you talking about? Remember the other day when she came over in her new spring outfit? Yeah. You were so sweet and wonderful and admiring and grand with the way you acted and the things you said. Daddy was just overwhelmed. Yeah. Overwhelmed with delight. She bought another dress this afternoon, and I bet my red dime she done it because she was so happy and encouraged by the things you told her about her spring outfit. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Now, see if you can be as nice and sweet and admiring and convincing as you were the other day. Anybody at home in this house, people? Oh, who's that, the garbage man? Hi, Chuck. Come in, come in. We're just about to barbecue a big friendly bear. Open the door. It's unhooked. Here we are again, Chuck. Have I changed much in appearance since we saw me last? Red hot greetings and feverish salutations. Stay away from the guy wires, please, or the daring performer may lose his life. Sit down, friends. Professor Ron Brewster will entertain you with a banjo solo. How are you, Mrs. McTook? I thought I saw you about three minutes ago. You did. I brought my husband back with me. He's not very pretty. No, he's not. But I want him to see Daddy's new dress. Oh, Dad! Is she upstairs putting on her new dress? Search me. I'm only here to keep the small boys from aping the monkeys and monkeying with the apes. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> There's two plain clothes men from headquarters here to see you. Hello up there. Well, Kettle. What you doing? Just printing. <laughs> well, where are you dressed down here? I got somebody that wants to admire you. Hello, Daddy. Oh, how are you down there, Vinny? His brother, ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry along, lady. I was talking with the Duke downtown today that was telling yeah, me that... I just had to bring Vic over to see Dottie's new dress. Uh-huh. Vic makes her feel so good about her clothes. Oh, is that a fine? Didn't she tell you what Vic said about her spring outfit? She may have. She told well, me so many Well, I bet she things. did. Why, he made her feel like a million dollars about her spring outfit. Uh-huh. And I dragged him over so he could make her feel like a million dollars about her dress. Uh-huh. No, Dick, I got talking with this nitwit downtown this afternoon. He gave me a bunch of axle grease hey, about... what's this, Chuck? Huh? What's all this on the library table? Oh, just a bunch of junk. Now, this Duke downtown tried to... Revolvers? Just a mm, bunch of junk I unpacked after supper this evening. Dottie and I still got several crates of odds and ends we haven't unpacked. Dueling pistols? Yeah, them are dueling pistols. I picked them up Look, years babe, ago and... Real dueling pistols. Oh, they're not loaded, are they, Chuck? No, no, I picked them up... Well, and... handled by George. Where'd you get them? I got them one time when I was on a trip to Duluth, Minnesota. I was a young Duke, and junk like that appealed to me. 
On that same trip, I bought a nitwit tent and lame brain lasso and a numb skull saddle. Yeah, wonderful gun. They're not bad. Here, give them to me once. I'll no, no, I'll... let me. Heck. <laughs> Say, look at me. I'm a desperado from the plains. I'm going to shoot up... Now, the a way to handle two pistols, Vic, is to hold them loose. No, no, no way. Say, look what a terrible desperado I am. Yeah. See, I'm way out in the cactus and sagebrush. I'm completely surrounded by Indians. I'll save one bullet for myself. What's this? A rattlesnake. Bing, bing, bing. You're dead, you reptile. <laughs> What's the matter with this, Duke, say? Yes, like... Who is this on the pinto pony? Why, it's my deadly enemy, the man who's sworn to murder me in cold blood. It's bad Bert Bitters. I better be quick on the draw. Stand back, Bert. Bing, bing, bing. I got him by George. Now I'll handle the Indians. Does he play cowboy like this at home, say? <laughs> I thought... No, Chuck, with a brace of revolvers like this excites me. Uh-huh. Look, Chuck, you're Killer Kennedy from Pike, Arkansas. Nah. Yeah, come on. Be Killer Kennedy from Pike, Arkansas. I don't want to play. <laughs> Bang, city. Don't point that thing at me. Oh, they're beauty. Set me back some dough. I don't know why I bought the half-wit guns. Guess I had some more that was running my pocket. They tonight. are beauties. <laughs> Stop pointing them revolvers at people, Fat. Yeah, it's the empty firearm that does the damage. I'm two-gun Tom, the pearl-handled bad man from Bixby Junction. Oh, oh, no, no, oh hurry, lady. Sorry, oh, can't wait to see you. I started to tell you about this numbskull duke I was chinning with downtown. He didn't have any more sense than to What's claim this? he would... Wait, for Pete's sake, it's a cowboy hat. Chuck owns a cowboy hat. I picked that up one time when I was traveling. Can I try it on? Sure. I'm going to try it on, Sade. I'm going to try it on. Watch, Sade. Funny thing about that cowboy hat. I happened to look in a store window there. I didn't know you owned stuff like this, Chuck. Oh, I got junk packed away till who hung the cat. (laughs) Look at me. It fits. Chuck, I didn't know we could wear the same size hat. Say, look at me. Uh, Hey, now, don't everybody (laughs) titter. Vic, here's Dolly. Bing, bing, bing. Look at me. Cowboy hat and pearl-handled revolver. Bing, bing, bing. By Julia. Vic, here's Dolly. She's got yeah. on her new dress. Put that stuff down. <laughs> oh, Vic, you have to stick up for me. If Cattle and Chuck don't like this dress, you Gauntlet have to... Gauntlet gloves, Chuck? Yeah, them are oh. gauntlet gloves. I bought them the same time I bought... Why, uh... Lady? <laughs> look at the baby doll. Oh, Dolly, you look wonderful. Oh, I'm fat. No. <laughs> I'm fat. You stack up. Okay, Dolly. <laughs> making fun of me. You're the one that sticks out Look, for say, me. gauntlet gloves. Regular cowboy gauntlet gloves. With fringe. Nick, Dottie's here. Hello, Dottie. Hey, why didn't you ever tell me this big slob of a chuck on dueling pistols and cowboy hat and gauntlet gloves? Oh, that's <laughs> just old stuff we've had for ages. Chuck doesn't pack it this evening. I don't... Bang, bang, bang. You're dead, Dottie. <laughs> I'm on the prairie, see? I know there's 500 redskins lying in ambush behind the mountain, see? So I... Bing, bing, bing! Hey, <laughs> put that stuff down. Here's Dottie. In her new dress, you come over to see. Oh, they will stick up for me. No fooling that. That's a mighty cute get up. It certainly is. Turn around once, lady. Oh, I'm fat. No, you're not. Oh, I'm fat. Vic, you haven't said what you... Not this? chaps, Chuck. Huh? This folded up business here isn't leather chaps, is it? Sure, I bought the darn things one Can time I and I... Them? Oh, Vic, for mercy's sake, we come over here Leather to... chaps, Dave. You pull them out over your pants. Will you look at Dottie? Oh, <laughs> yes, Vic. You haven't paid me the slightest bit of attention. Isn't that a perfectly beautiful dress? Sure is. Oh, I'm fat. Yeah. I look fat? Uh-huh. Mighty nice yellow dress. It's not yellow. It's fawn. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> I get you. Put them revolvers down. Then. Give them a minute. Yeah. No, I'm going to put on the chaps. What for? Well, you don't hurt if I put on the chaps, does it? No, but Thunder, you act like somebody... Well, I'm not going to steal them. You're not using them. I'll just slip on the chaps, gauntlet gloves, and the cowboy hat, and flourish the dueling pistols, and What's throw your the matter, darling? Nothing. Where are you going? No, please. Oh, wait a minute, Dottie. I'm going upstairs. Oh, wait a minute. I'm all right. Dottie, listen. You got any other stuff, Chuck? No, you done it. How do you mean? Dottie's crying. Who is she? She ran upstairs. Who is she? All your fault. Yes. Uh, got any other stuff, Chuck? You got any other cowboy stuff? Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. <laughs>